taken some suttas uh, which are kind of very elaborate and detailed. So I wanted to kind of take today a sutta which is kind of giving an overall picture, uh, which is uh, the name of the sutta is Ganaka Moklana. Ganaka Moklana is an accountant and he comes to the Buddha uh, for uh, getting uh, some insight into the teaching. So this is the insight you have to be aware when you are going out uh, into the life that uh, whatever you are learning over here, how it progresses step by step. That is the main kind of crux of this teaching. Thus have I heard, on one occasion the Blessed One was living at Samadhi in the eastern park in the palace of Nidara's mother. So now there is a uh, this uh, name palace of Nidara's mother has a kind of a very good story to it. It also shows the kind of humor uh, the uh, bhikkhus uh, at that time possessed. Migara's mother was uh, Veshakha, who was a uh, female, uh, the foremost female fo follower of the Buddha. Like uh, Anatha Pindaka was the foremost of the lay followers, uh, 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 and uh, Veshakha was the female lay fo uh, follower who was the foremost of there. Why was she called Migara's mother? Huh. Vaishakha. Vaishakha. Dhamma Dina is Dhamma Dina was uh, the bhikkhuni with the foremost wisdom. Okay. Uh, this is a lay uh, person, Vaishakha. And why she is called Migara's mother? Once uh, his uh, uh, father-in-law was Migara. And they were, uh, he, she was serving him food. And an ascetic came for, uh, at the door. At the time that when the ascetic came at the door, and the, uh, his uh, father-in-law was very miser. He was a rich person, but he was a miser. He said, I don't have food, uh, you can go, uh, and he ignored the person. So, uh, Vaishakha feeling bad because she was follower of the Buddha, she was very generous. So, she said uh, to the ascetic, oh, uh, forget, uh, uh, please go to another house, he is eating stale food. So, he got very angry and said, what are you saying? I, I am eating the food which even kings kind of uh, don't find sometimes. So, how, why are you saying this is a stale food? So, she explains to him that whatever karmic uh, good you have done in the past, that is the reason why you are getting this kind of uh, good food. And uh, that is because of your past karmic, that is the reason this is stale food. If you are not giving uh, and not uh, doing uh, dana now, then uh, you will not be able to get uh, in the future. So she was very impressed by her, his, uh, uh, her explanation and she, he said that I will consider you my mother. So th then uh, that is the, uh, the Migara's mother. Why is this a palace? So that is a, another story. Where once Vishakha, uh, as we uh, know that she was a very rich lady, uh, so she went to, to the, uh, meet the Buddha and she had a very elaborate uh, necklace. You see this in uh, Indian, South Indian weddings also. This necklace, uh, it covers the whole body and it has diamonds and jewellery and all everything. So she said that it would be uh, inappropriate for me to go with this jewellery. So she kept that uh, aside uh, and a root of a tree and then uh, asked her uh, attendant to look after it and she went and uh, met the Buddha. When uh, she returned, the attendant forgot to take this jewellery and uh, one of the monks found it and put uh, this in the uh, uh, safe place. That is the process of a monastery. If you find something which is unclaimed, you take this and put it in a safe place and when the person uh, comes and he can claim it, like lost and found. So this, this was a normal process in a monastery that time. So then uh, Vaishaka said that you can go and see if it is there at the root of the tree. If it is not, then donate it to the uh, monastery. So uh, she came back, uh, the attendant came back and saw this was not there. She went and uh, spoke to the monk and said that uh, we are donating this to the monastery because uh, you have uh, kept it in uh, safekeeping. So uh, they refused. They said that no, we cannot uh, accept uh, gold or uh, jewellery. 
So uh, uh, she brought back that uh, jewelry to Vaishak. When uh, this jewelry was brought back, uh, she said that, okay, if they are not uh, taking this thing, then I will sell this and uh, build them a monastery. When uh, she bought a lot of money, they, they say in the commentary some amount of money. Uh, so she got a lot of money. So she made a monastery which was seven stories high. So there is a mention of this later also of that monastery. So the, it was a seven story high monastery she had made. So they used to call this monastery Bigara's uh, mother's palace. So abhi jo hum sutta le rahe hain wo uh, uh, jo uh, uh, jiska uh, uh, jahan pe ho raha hai ye sutta jahan pe wo hai Bigara ke mata ka uh, mahal. Wo naam kaise pada uske baare mein main thoda maine kahani yahan pe bataya. वो बिगारा जो था वो वो वैशाखा जो है उसका जो ससुर है वो बिगारा था जब वो खाना खा रहा था और वो खाना जो है बिक्कू को दान करने से मना किया तो उसने बोला तुमने बासी खाना खा रहे हो तो उसने पूछा ऐसा क्यों क्योंकि तुम्हारा जो भी पहले कर्म किया है उसके कर्म का फल आपको अभी मिल रहा है मगर जो आप अभी कर्म करोगे तो उसका फल आपको फिर आपको आगे मिलेगा तो वो सुन के बहुत खुश हो के वो बोला कि अभी मैं आपको मैं अपनी माता मानूंगा तो इसके लिए इसके लिए बिगारा का माता का नाम ऐसा वो लोग से जानते थे उन्हें फिर एक बार वैशा का जब वहाँ पे बुद्ध को मिलने गई तो कुछ उनके पास में एक माला थी वो माला उन्होंने बाजू में रख दिया बुद्ध को मिलने से पहले और बाद में क्या हुआ वो माला वहाँ भूल गई तो जब वो वापस जाके वो माला उन्हों को वापस नहीं आया तो उन्होंने बोला नहीं आप आप ही रखिए फिर उन्होंने बोले मना किया कि हम ये नहीं ले सकते तो उन्होंने वो माला बेच के वहाँ पे सात मंजिला एक बिक्खू का वास बनाया तो वो इतना अच्छा और क्या उसको महल कहने लगे वो लोग तो मिगारा का माता का महल उस तरह से वो जानते थे सो विल प्रोसीड Then the Brahmin Ganata Mogalana went to the Blessed One and exchanged greeting with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he sat down to one side and said to the Blessed One, Master Gautama, in this palace of Migara's mother, there can be seen gradual training, gradual practice and gradual progress that is down to the last step of the staircase. Why is it saying down to the last step of the staircase there is a gradual progress? Because to make a seven-story building, you have to start with the ground floor, uh, with the foundation, then upper first floor, second floor. So this also is a gradually you can make this palace. So ये ये कहते हैं कि जहाँ पे जो महल है, इसके अंदर भी जो धीरे-धीरे जो काम होता है, उस तरह आप देख सकते हैं क्योंकि एक एक माले से दूसरा माला से चौथा माले से सातवां माला उस तरह से आपका चीजें हो रही हैं मेंस आपका जो भी आप सी कर रहे हैं वो आप धीरे-धीरे और क्रमबद्ध तरीके से आप करते हैं तो कोई भी चीज करते हैं उसके अंदर वो दिखा जाता है। Among those Brahmins too, there can be seen gradual training, gradual practice and gradual progress. That is in study. So जो Brahmin हैं वो भी अभी जो जो शिक्षा लेते हैं वो भी धीरे से लेते हैं और क्रमबद्ध तरीके से लेते हैं। Among archers. आर्चर मीन्स तीरबाज जो है वो भी धीरे धीरे वो आपका ट्रेनिंग लेते हैं अमंग अकाउंटेंट्स अकाउंटेंट्स मीन्स हम लोग क्या बोलेंगे अकाउंटेंट्स को लेखा हाँ तो लेखा जो है उनके अंदर भी धीरे धीरे वो लोग ट्रेनिंग देते हैं पहले उनको पाठ भी सिखाया जाता है दो दो दिन का चार दिन का फिर आठ आठ या उस तरह से टेबल सिखाए सो देन दिस ग्रेजुएट ट्रेनिंग इज सीन इन अदर प्रोफेशन आल्सो लाइक एन आर्चर इज देयर और ए अकाउंटेंट इज देयर देर आर टेबल्स आर टॉट लाइक टू इनटू बाय टू थ्री बाय थ्री फोर बाय फोर इन दैट वे द टेबल्स आर आल्सो टॉट टू देम सो इन ए ग्रेजुएट प्रोसेस for when we get an apprentice, first we make him count one one, two twos, three threes, four fours, five fives, six six, seven seven, eight eights, nine nines, ten tens, and we make him count a hundred two. Now it is also possible, Master Gautama, to describe gradual training, gradual practice, 
एंड ग्रेजुअल प्रोसेस इन दिस धम्मा एंड डिसाइडेड तो इस तरह से जो आपका धर्म का जो शिक्षा हम ले, ले रहे हैं उसके अंदर भी क्या इस तरह से आप कम वर्ग तरीके से होता है इज इट पॉसिबल इट इज पॉसिबल प्लानिंग टू डिस्क्राइब ग्रेजुअल ट्रेनिंग ग्रेजुअल प्रैक्टिस एंड ग्रेजुअल प्रोग्रेस इन दिस धर्म एंड डिसाइड हाँ वैसा uh, हो सकता है जस्ट एज ब्राह्मिंग वेन ए क्लेवर हाउस ट्रेनर हॉर्स ट्रेनर ऑप्टेन से फाइन थरो ग्रेड कॉट he first makes him get used to wearing the bit and afterwards trains him further so jaise ek aap acha ghoda lete hain to pehle aap unko uske andar naal ye karte hain aur uske baad mein usko aage aage uska shiksha dete hain there is one other sutra where it is mentioned in detail first they put a bit on the nose then they make him walk in the circles then they put a saddle on it and then make it walk in the circle then uh, somebody uh, rides on it and walks in circle and then uh, uh, different kind of activities the uh, the horse is taught so when the tathagata obtains a person to be tamed he first disciplines him thus come student be virtuous restrain with the restraint of the patimukha over here patimukha is there, uh, uh, mentioned because it is a monks we would consider uh, precepts whatever precepts we are taking like five precepts or eight precepts be perfect in conduct and resort and seeing fear in the slightest fault trained by undertaking the training precepts when a uh, brahmin the student is virtuous and seeing fear in the slightest fault trains by undertaking the training precepts then the tathagata further disciplines him further pehle wo bolte hain ki kis tarah se शिक्षा आरंभ की जाती है पहले शिक्षा का आरंभ क्या होता है कि आपका शील दिया जाता है तो यहाँ पे पति मुखा इसलिए कहा गया है क्योंकि ये भिखू के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं मगर हम लोग क्या लेते हैं पांच शील या अठ शील लेते हैं तो वो उससे शुरुआत होती है कम स्टूडेंट गार्ड द डोर्स ऑफ दर साइंस फैकल्टी ऑन सींग ए फॉर्म when uh, uh, brahmin the student is virtuous and seeing fear in the slightest fault trains by undertaking the training precepts then the uh, tathagata disciplines him further come student guard the doors of your sense faculty on seeing a form with the eye do not grasp at its signs and features since if you were to leave the eye faculty unguarded evil unwholesome states uh, of covetousness and grief might invade you तो लोग क्या पहले क्या बोलते हैं कि आपका जो इंद्रिया है उसको आप संवर करना है मीन्स आपको इंद्रिया इंद्रियों के ऊपर आपको ध्यान देना है कि अगर आपका कोई कोई चीज़ देख देखी जाती है तो उसको आपको पकड़ना नहीं है सो द मेन फैक्टर ऑफ दिस इज दैट व्हेन यू आर सीइंग समथिंग और व्हेन यू आर हियरिंग समथिंग स्मेलिंग समथिंग टेस्टिंग समथिंग देर इज ए टच और माइंड थाट इज दैट You should not grasp that things. So those uh, things are uh, you have to first recognize where your mind is going. So over here the six R comes into play. So when you recognize your mind is uh, distracted, you release it, you relax it, you release uh, mind, and you return back to what you are doing. So what is important is that whenever you are uh, uh, having any contact, what happens is there is a feeling. and how is this feeling uh, uh, you have this chart no seven element chart you can look at that seven element chart so when there is contact there is feeling when there is feeling there is uh, a craving i uh, the craving is i like it or i don't like it mind so whenever there is a feeling of i like it or i uh, don't like it uh, then uh, what happens is the th third thing comes up is craving clinging so clinging is the uh, whatever thoughts you are thinking if you want you can uh, take this uh, chart okay so uh, you can you have the chart no okay up again so uh, so you see that whenever uh, a a a contact happens through the eye through the ear to the nose to the tongue to the touch to the mind uh, then there is a feeling which comes up the feeling is 
coming up and uh, they have three uh, kind of responses to the feeling. One is I like it, I don't like it, uh, or the third is this is either likeable or not likeable. So it is a pleasant feeling or a, a, a unpleasant feeling or neither pleasant nor pleasant feeling. And there is a craving associated with that kind of a feeling. That is I like this or I don't like it. So mostly uh, the neither perception or non-perception, sorry, the neither painful or uh, 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 pleasurable feeling, that feeling is classified with I like it because uh, that you do not oppose that thing. So uh, you can also uh, consider feeling into two. So there are different way of teaching feeling. That is uh, two kinds of feeling, three kinds of feeling. Then there is uh, five, five kind of feeling, six kind of feeling. <coughs> kind of feeling. So there is different way of explaining feeling but we go by I like it or I don't like it. That is uh, that is the craving, the start of craving. So when you crave something or you would like something you have all the justifications for liking it. So uh, because it is uh, 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 something which my mother gave it or something like uh, because I, I have always had this or something like that. You know? So and if you don't like it then you have justification for that also. When you have justification that, that there is a habitual tendency, which is when this happens, you do that. Okay? So that habitual tendency comes into play. When you have a habitual tendency, there is a birth of action. You do something based on that uh, which has come. And then uh, when something uh, has a start, what it has is an end. So there is a death to the action. So after you have, uh, first you uh, uh, you uh, have precepts then you ensure that your uh, sense faculties which are there you have to keep a control on that how do you keep a control by six are when your mind get distracted with anything so that's the reason we say you, you have to use this in a, the whole day where uh, uh, you can use it this process so you are wherever this happens then uh, uh, it is elaborated again further When the uh, when the when be, uh, when, uh, when Brahmin the student guards the doors of sense faculties, then the Tathagata disciplines him further. Come, student, be moderate in eating. So this is what we were def uh, discussing that day. So this is the uh, uh, advice. Reflecting wisely, you should take food neither for amusement nor for intoxication, nor for the sake of physical beauty and attractiveness, but only for the endurance and continuance of this body, for ending discomfort and for assisting the holy life. Considering thus, I shall terminate old feelings without arousing new feelings. What are the old feelings and what are the new feelings? Old feelings is the feeling of hunger. And what is the new feeling? You should avoid of overeating. So after uh, you uh, eat a little bit more, you have this heaviness that also uh, is a hindrance to your practice. So you have to have that balance. And uh, I shall be healthy and blameless and I shall live in comfort. When uh, Brahmin, the uh, student, is moderate in eating, then the Tathagata disciplines him further. Come student, be devoted to wakefulness. During the day, while walking back and forth and sitting, purify your mind of obstructive state. So, what are the obstructive states? These are the hindrances which comes up. So, whenever uh, it is talking about obstructive state, these are the distractions. Your mind is getting distracted. How do you get rid of them? By using right effort. That is, you recognize, release, relax, re-smile and come back. So, it is saying that you have to constantly understand your mind. So, one other uh, thing I elaborate. Purify. अच्छा uh, मैंने अभी हिंदी में बहुत टाइम से ये नहीं किया ना तो मैं अभी जब तथा तथा ने वो कहा कि पहले आपको शील का पालन करना चाहिए उसके शील के पालन के बाद में उन्होंने किसका बताया कि आपको जो इंद्रिय संवर करना चाहिए इंद्रिय संवर के बाद में उन्होंने बताया कि इंद्रिय संबंध कैसे होता है जब आप सही प्रयास करते हैं आप जो भी आपका मन में कोई विचार आता है उसे आप पहचानते हैं छोड़ देते हैं रिलैक्स करते स्माइल करते वापस अपने कार्य पे आते हैं और उसके बाद में आपका जो भोजन है जो भी भोजन आप खाते हैं आपका अभी जो अभी भूख आई है 
उसे मिटाने के लिए करते हैं मगर आप ज़्यादा नहीं खाते हैं क्योंकि आप अगर आप ज़्यादा खाएंगे तो फिर आपको हवी आपको हैवी लगेगा और वो ऐसा भी नहीं होना चाहिए तो उस तरह से आपको भोजन का भी ये करना चाहिए और उसके बाद में वो कहते हैं कि जहाँ पे भी आप जाते हैं जहाँ पे भी जो कार्य करते हैं तब उसके अंदर आपका ये आपका चेतना रहना चाहिए और कोई भी आपका मन में विचार आता है तो उसे आपको जाने देना चाहिए तो तब तब कोई भी कार्य करते हुए भी आपको शिक्षा या सही प्रयास करते रहना चाहिए गार्ड द आई फैकल्टी एंड द ईयर फैकल्टी दैन द नोज फैकल्टी टन फैकल्टी बॉडी एंड द माइंड डू नॉट ग्रास्प एट इट साइंस एंड फीचर्स सिंस इफ यू वेयर टू लीव द माइंड फैकल्टी अनगार्डेड ई वर अनहोलसम स्टेट माइंड इन्वेड यू प्रैक्टिस द वे ऑफ इट्स रिस्ट्रेंट गार्ड द माइंड फैकल्टी अंडरटेक द रिस्ट्रेंट ऑफ द माइंड फैकल्टी हाउ यू डू दैट बाई डूइंग दिक्स आर अगेन दैट इज द राइट एफर्ट When Brahmin, the student guards the doors of his sense faculties, then the uh, tathagata disciplines him further. Come, uh, student, be moderate in eating. So that has happened. When um, to wakefulness during the day when uh, walking back and forth, sitting, purify your mind of obstructive states in the first watch of the night while walking back and forth and sitting, purify your mind of obstructive states in the middle of the night. You should lie down on the right side in the lion's pose with one foot overlapping the other, mindful and fully aware. After noting in your mind the time of rising, so this is what we said in the first day. So when you are sleeping, then note a time you want to get up and uh, get up at that time. That is called determination. Adithan karna hai. Jab aap aap sote hain to aap adithan karna hai. Jab uthna hai aapko, to wo yahan pe karna hai. लाइन पोज इस तरह से है कि अगर आप जब आप जो साइड में सोते हैं जैसे समझो ये हेड है तो आप साइड में सोते हैं राइट साइड के अंदर आपका राइट साइड के ऊपर सोते हैं और आपका पैर एक के ऊपर एक रहता है इस तरह से उसको लाइन पोज वो आपको स्लीपिंग बुद्धा आपका स्टैचू आपने देखा होगा तो वो लाइन पोज है तो उस तरह से वो सोते हैं तो साइड में सोने से क्या होता है कि प्रेशर जो है हार्ट के ऊपर नहीं आता है आप आराम से सो सकते हैं और इसका जो साइकिकली वो लोग क्या बोलते हैं कि आपका जो लस्टफुल थॉट्स है वो कम आते हैं इस इस पोज के अंदर तो इसके हिसाब से वो लाइन्स पोज में सोने का वो लोग बुद्ध बोलते हैं और बुद्ध भी कभी भी लाइन्स पोज में ही सोते थे जो साइड में है तो वो अभी एक साइंटिफिक कुछ रिसर्च भी हुआ है कि वो इज गिविंग लेस प्रेशर टू द हार्ट अगर आप वहाँ पे ऐसा सोचते हैं तो उस हिसाब से भी अच्छा है आफ्टर राइजिंग इन द थर्ड वॉच ऑफ द नाइट वाई वॉकिंग बैक एंड फोर्थ एंड सिटिंग प्योरीफाई योर माइंड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टिव स्टेट्स वेन ब्राह्मीन द स्टूडेंट इज डिवोटेड टू वेकफुलनेस then the tathagata discipline him further come student be possessed of mindfulness and full awareness so over here uh, he has to be wakeful now he has to be fully aware and mind mindful pehle unko aap jagrut rehne ke liye to kaha gaya abhi puri tarah se sachet aur aapka man jo hai aapka uske upar dhyan dene ke liye kaha gaya hai act in a full awareness when going forward and returning act in full awareness when looking ahead and looking away act in full awareness when flexing and extending your limbs act in full awareness when wearing your robes and carrying your outer robe and bowl act in full awareness when eating drinking consuming food and tasting act in full awareness when defecating and urinating act in full awareness when walking standing sitting falling asleep waking up talking and keeping silent full awareness of what you have to keep when you are sitting you know you are sitting so what is the full awareness you have to keep of how of what of what uh, our mind's attention is doing at that point of time how our mind's attention is behaving so if it is going to the unwholesome you recognize you release relax and come back so over here also right effort is the uh, in action वैन ब्राह्मीन वो लोग कहते हैं कि हर हर आपको क्या ध्यान रखना चाहिए अगर आप जो भी काम कार्य कर रहे हैं 
तो मन आपको पता है आप बैठे हैं तो आप बैठे हैं चल रहे तो चल रहे आपका मन क्या कर रहा है उस उस समय में वो ध्यान रखना है कोई भी कार्य करते वक्त आपका मन के ऊपर आपको ये रहना चाहिए आपको ध्यान रखना चाहिए वेन ब्राह्मीण द स्टूडेंट प्रोसेस इज माइंडफुलनेस एंड फुल अवेयरनेस देन द तथा कथा डिसिप्लिन सिंह फर्दर कम स्टूडेंट रिजॉर्ट टू सेक्लूडेड रेस्टिंग प्लेसेस द फॉरेस्ट द रूट ऑफ ए ट्री ए माउंटेन ए रेविन ए हिल साइड केव ए चार्नल ग्राउंड ए जंगल टिकेट एंड ओपन स्पेस ए हीप ऑफ स्ट्रॉ सो दिस एडवाइस इज गिवन फॉर ए सेक्लूडेड प्लेस but there are certain sutras where uh, they say that if you are not ready for that place is don't go there so one of the uh, uh, ways of uh, knowing that he is ready is that if he can do the uh, metta or brahma vihara practice if he can do the brahma vihara practice very well then he can go if he has fourth jhana then he can go to this places if he does not uh, adhere to that then those can same places can become a danger to them so that has also been mentioned so this is uh, advice but it is not for everybody it is only for people who are uh, suitable they have uh, suitably trained to go in this places so why is that yeah why is that uh, because uh, if you go uh, to as a jungle ticket okay and then there is a fear arising so and you are not sure how to do the six are correctly or you are not sure how to uh, send metta uh, and cover yourself with a metta rubber or something like that then uh, you may get too afraid and you may uh, kind of fall into trouble mm -hmm. so uh, that all uh, things are uh, to be considered when you are going to a, a secluded place so your mind has to be uh, in control and you have to be able to take uh, advantage of that uh, this thing not become afraid and always be worried and look here and there and uh, that that can be kind of a problem it may have a reverse effect it may have a reverse effect yes he resorts to a secluded resting place a forest a hill of stone on returning from his arms round after his meal he sits down folding his legs crosswise sitting his uh, setting his body erect and establishing mindfulness before him abandoning covetousness for the world he abides with a mind free from covetousness he purifies his mind from covetousness abandoning ill will and hatred he abides with a mind free of ill will so how do you abandon your mind uh, with uh, from ill will by doing metta when you do metta your mind is of metta then ill will is not there सो so, अगर आपका मन जो है द्वेष से किस तरह दूर रहता है जब आप मेहता करते हैं किसी के प्रति द्वेष नहीं रहता है तो आपका मन जो है मेहता के तरफ आपको पहले उनको बोलते हैं अगर आप जाते हैं कहीं पे आप प्रैक्टिस कर रहे हैं पहले आपका मन आपका दोष से दूर करिए कंपैशनेट फॉर द वेलफेयर ऑफ ऑल बींग ही प्योरीफाइज हिज माइंड फॉर फ्रॉम इन विल एंड हेटरेड avoiding uh, abandoning sloth and torpor he uh, uh, abides free from sloth and uh, sloth and torpor uh, percipient of light mindful and fully aware he purifies his mind from sloth and torpor abandoning restlessness and remorse he, he abides and agitated with a mind inwardly peaceful he purifies his mind from restlessness and remorse abandoning doubt he abides ha having gone beyond doubt unperplexed about uh, wholesome uh, states he uh, purifies his mind from doubt so wo panch jo aapko ye avrod aate hain usko wo dur karta hai jo aapka lobh hai dosh hai fir restlessness hai ya aapko neend aana hai aur aapka jo doubt hai doubt ko kya bolte hain shankha hai to wo sare usko dur karta hai ek baar having thus abandoned these five hindrances imperfections of the mind that awaken uh, that weaken wisdom quite secluded from uh, sensual pleasures secluded from unwholesome state he enters upon and abides in the first jhana so jab wo panch jo uh, aapke avrodh hai wo nikalte hain to fir aap pehle jhana mein jaate hain so then he explains the full jhana process we have gone uh, i think two or three times to the jhana process he goes to the first jhana then the second jhana and the third jhana and the fourth jhana uh, progressively uh, develops his mind towards the purer uh, pure, purified mind 
this is my instruction from me to those uh, students who are in higher training whose minds have not yet attained the goal who abide aspiring to the supreme security from bondage but these things uh, conclude both to a pleasant abiding here and now and to a mindful and full awareness for those students who are arahants with taints destroyed who have lived the holy life done what has to be done laid down the burden reached their own goal destroyed the fetters of being and are completely liberated to final knowledge so this is the same practice a arahant also uh, is uh, living in so he, he, uh, even if this practice is useful for every student to reach their goal even an arahant uh, lives abiding by this rules ye jo aapko shiksha di ja rahi hai wo jo shik sikh raha hai वो एक स्टूडेंट uh, के बारे में है मगर जो uh, अरहंत हो गए हैं वो भी इसी का पालन करते हैं और इस तरह से जीवन बिताते हैं वेन दिस वॉज सेट द्राह्मीण गाना का मुकरा आज द ब्लेसड वन वेन मास्टर गौतम एडवाइस इंस्ट्रक्टेड बाई हेम डू दे अटेन निपाना द अल्टीमेट गोल और डू सम नॉट अटेन हेम इट्स ए इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन वेन ब्राह्मीण दे आर दस एडवाइज एंड इंस्ट्रक्टेड बाई मी some of my disciples attain nibbana the ultimate goal and some do not attain so he said that not everybody attains uh, the goal of nibbana so this is uh, something which I, he clarifies later master gotama since nibbana exists and the path leading to nibbana exists and master gotama is present as the guide what is the cause and reason why when master gotama's disciples are thus advised and instructed by him some of them attain nibbana the ultimate goal and some do not attain it as to that uh, brahmin i will ask you a question in return answer it as you choose what do you think brahmin are you familiar with the road leading to rajgaha Yes, uh, Master Gautama. I am familiar to, with the road leading to Rajgaha. What do you think, Brahmin? Suppose a man came who wanted to go to Rajgaha. He approached you and said, "Venerable sir, I want to go to Rajgaha. Show me the road to Rajgaha." Then you told him, "Now, good uh, man, this road goes to Rajgaha. So you have to follow this this route, and you will reach Rajgaha." So. If uh, this man is uh, uh, that the Buddha says that if this man goes on his own way and he goes uh, west in, instead of east and reaches some other place, then uh, are you responsible for that? He said no. Say if some other person comes and asks for the road to Rajgaha and you say the same uh, instruction, but that person follows the instructions and reaches the uh, Rajgaha because he has followed the instruction. so in the same way the buddha can only guide so whatever we are doing is we can only guide we cannot take you to the ultimate uh, destination destination to walk on that path is to be done by the uh, each individual so ganaka mandula na puchta hai ki ek sa kya sab nibbana ko prapt hote hain to buddha ke des thode log nibbana ko prapt hote hain thode nahi jo hamara instruction mante hain वो निपाना का जाते हैं और उसके लिए एक एग्जांपल देते हैं कि अगर आपने राजगाह का पथ आपने किसी को बताया और वो उस तरह से नहीं चल के वो कहीं और पहुंच गया तो आपका गलती है क्या तो गलत तो बोलता होगा नहीं मेरा गलती नहीं मैंने तो आपको बराबर उनको रास्ता बताया <coughs> अगर वो दूसरा आदमी आता है उसको वही रास्ता बताया जाता है मगर वो रास्ते पर चल के वहाँ पर पहुँच जाता है तो उस हिसाब से कुछ पहुंचते हैं कुछ नहीं पहुंचते हैं सो वॉट एवर इंस्ट्रक्शन वी कैन गिव वी कैन गिव दैट इज द रीजन द गाइड हैज बीन द वर्ड यूज एंड माई टीचर ऑल्सो लाइक द वर्ड अर गाइड वी आर नॉट द टीचर वी से वी आर द गाइड यू आर द टीचर बिकॉज यू टीच योर सेल्फ बाई योर एक्सपीरियंस वॉट एवर यू सी इन योर मेडिटेशन यस आई कुछ Guru is a system where it is not there in the uh, system of uh, our uh, uh, lineage or whatever you can say. We don't uh, consider uh, as gurus. What we consider as uh, that we are guides. So we we will be able to uh, uh, give the instruction as the Buddha has given you, and it is up to you. So there is no guru uh, system over here. That uh, guru 
guru system is uh, kind of considered the underlying thing is that he has the knowledge and he will impart you the knowledge. And we, uh, uh, the Buddha says that uh, you have the knowledge, but I will, I can impart you the way of uh, attending to that knowledge. So because each uh, uh, person has a different karmic past, it has a, a different uh, kind of uh, setup. But the process of working is the same. That's the reason the uh, uh, whatever we have given you, the dependent origination, that is the way a person functions. But you can see by your own self how it is working and then you can progress. So that is the reason uh, there is no guru uh, system in this. So after that, uh, Ganaka Mokana praises the Buddha that uh, uh, there are many monks who are, uh, or ascetics who uh, become ascetics for the money and they are very uh, angry and they are uh, proud and they don't speak uh, well and, uh, but uh, with Buddha, the ascetics who are there with him are uh, well uh, disciplined, they speak well and they follow the uh, path of the uh, uh, practice well, because it's a lot of uh, words have been used. So, I am not repeating that. Just as a black orris root is reckoned as the best of root perfumes, and red sandalwood is reckoned as the best wood perfumes, jasmine is reckoned as the best of uh, flower perfumes, so to Master Gautama's advice is supreme among the teachings of today. Magnificent Master Gautama, Magnificent Master Gautama. Master Gautama has made the Dhamma clear in many ways, as though we were turning upright what had been overturned, revealing what was hidden, showing the way to one who was lost, or holding up a lamp in the dark for those with eyesight to see the forms. I go to Master Gautama for refuge uh, and to the Dhamma and to the Sangha of the uh, Bhikkhus. Let Master Gautama remember me as a lay follower who has gone to him for refuge for life. So now this uh, phrase which is there uh, has been repeated in some of the uh, suttas that uh, like uh, what has been uh, uh, overturned has been uh, turned upright. So ye jo uh, last mein jo wo kehte hai, wo cheez jo hai bhoot baar uh, dhorai gai hai. Ye ek code hai uh, kehne ke liye ke jo vekti ne ye kaha hai ke wo sota panna ho gai hai. So, when he says this kind of a phrase, when he says kind of a phrase, when he says this kind of a phrase, the person is become a sota parent. It's a kind of a quote that this has been, and the person who was a lay person has, been, has attained to uh, uh, wisdom or a path of the wisdom, the first path of the wisdom. So, that, that this uh, phrase has been repeated in other suttas also. And in some of the suttas, uh, it, uh, if they are talking about the bhikkhus, they will say that uh, so many bhikkhus attained arahan. Uh, so then at the end they, uh, they kind of uh, give what was the uh, reaction of the audience. So this is one of the reactions of the audience and that is uh, 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 indicating, yes? So when he came to meet the Buddha after uh, the uh, teaching, he, he uh, said the same thing uh, as he says, but he was not a Sotapanna. But uh, the Buddha says that because uh, he has killed his parents, the next life has to be in hell for him. So he was born in hell, then he will be born in a, a human realm, and then he will become a Pachyaka Buddha. So Pachyaka Buddha. The Buddha who uh, attains uh, uh, awakening on his own uh, strength or on his own, own investigation. So Devadatta also has this fate. After he, uh, he goes to uh, uh, the hell realm, he will come back and become a Pachyaka Buddha. Because going to a hell realm uh, in this uh, uh, kind of
kind of situations he had a bent of mind okay to the teaching but uh, because of some karmic uh, actions of his like killing his father or injuring the buddha he, they had to go to the uh, hell realm but when they come back their experience of that seeing that the samsara can be so painful they want to uh, seek escape so there are two ways buddha says one when uh, uh, you have a dukkha you have two ways of uh, dealing with it one is distraction and another is asking well, how can i end this thing? so that is a uh, inclination of mind so uh, when that is an inclination of mind they will try and uh, attain awakening without uh, a help of the samma sambuddha because the samma sambuddha is not a buddha era so that is how it happens sir is it pacheka buddha is someone who is attain awakening on his own pacheka buddha is a, uh, a person who has attained uh, by striving on his own others voice is necessary because uh, when we are there okay that uh, that uh, and, and the buddha era then uh, we need to have the buddha or if that the buddha era is not there in support, certain uh, special circumstances only uh, a pachita buddha is possible like uh, we uh, say uh, this uh, 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 ajada shuddha had uh, uh, listened to the buddha sermon and then he had a bent of mind but he had uh, certain things which uh, avoided uh, the next life Uh, he could have had it uh, in, uh, within the Buddha era, but uh, that did not happen. And uh, uh, Devadatta Tha had also had the uh, training, uh, Buddha's training, but he kind of uh, become wavered because of his. Uh, he he first developed the uh, psychic power and became kind of very uh, egoistical before he could uh, awaken. And thus uh, the uh, chain of events happened, and then he went. So there those kind of uh, uh, exceptional ex- events are there. that is the time when uh, the a person uh, has to has no other choice but to uh, uh, seek an end to the suffering and then he strives and uh, attains that so these are exceptions these are exceptions chachana buddha is an exception because normally there is a uh, samasa buddha or uh, uh, the uh, there is savaka buddha savaka buddha is anybody who listen to the buddha and becomes a So there, these are the choice which we have. Uh, currently also, uh, that we have the training, so we can become Buddhas or uh, on our own self. That is what. Because Buddha was also Pachika Buddha to see awakening on his own. Because he taught, uh, then he became a Samma Sambuddha. Because the teaching is ma- making the difference. The one who teaches. So that that uh, is the kind of a differentiation factor. So the, uh, one of the ways uh, I think commentaries uh, mention is in uh, Parmis. I, well, we don't kind of uh, uh, pay much attention to the Parmis. They say that there are ten Parmis you have to fulfill. If uh, one uh, 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 ten Parmis are being fulfilled, uh, then uh, you uh, you can become an Arahant. If there are two ten Parmis, uh, that is double the time you do it, then you become a Pachya Kavita. If you do it three times. the uh, complete uh, parmi feeling then you will come as samma sambuddha but we kind of uh, don't pay that much attention to that commentaries commentaries uh, were uh, made after the buddha so there is a kind of a uh, uh, very cautious approach to commentaries so like uh, vishuddhi bhaga is there the book uh, or the uh, abhidhamma is there those things came after the buddha so we are kind of very uh, uh, careful to Uh, where whatever is there, we kind of uh, compare it to the suttas, and then so that is the thing which uh, Buddha said in the uh, uh, I think uh, Parinirvana Sutta that whenever somebody comes and says that I have heard this uh, from Buddha himself, so don't uh, approve or don't disapprove, but uh, go to the suttas and see if I have said this. If it is in line with that, accept that. If it is not in line with whatever I have thought, then discard it. If somebody says I I have heard from somebody who has heard from the Buddha, I have heard from a senior monk, I have heard from a group of senior monks, I have heard from a monk, I have heard from somebody, or, or whatever teaching is there, you compare it with what is there. If it matches, you accept. If it does not match, so that is how we also uh, take whatever is the uh, commentaries. So commentaries. 
the process which, uh, which we uh, say is from the commentaries the process we follow that is uh, send uh, meta to our, ourselves then to our future friend then we give uh, breaking down of barriers a uh, practice and then we uh, ask them to go to the uh, directions but in the sutras uh, directions has been mentioned directly so wherever it is uh, convenient and we see that it is useful we have used the uh, commentary wherever we say that it is kind of going to away from uh, the teaching core teaching then we kind of uh, don't uh, pay that much attention to that so it is a, a balanced approach and what works approach to uh, what is commentary some of the vishuddha magga uh, books are there that are very good for lists so if you want to get uh, how many kind of feelings are there then there is a list of them how many kinds of ascetic practices are there i think 13 ascetic practices are there so those you can get over there the list uh, system is uh, much uh, more better over there so but uh, you don't need to know the list of everything you just need to know how your mind is functioning so how you are getting distracted and how you want to stay then you have to know what is important over here is that it is a gradual process it is a process which gradually happens so you have to put your attention and gradually uh, go ahead uh, as i have time i will give you a, a modal sutra over here from samyutta nikaya yes yes uh, there is a uh, there is Devdat, yeah. How could he attain that level? Because the uh, uh, Devdat was egoistic, but uh, he had uh, the uh, uh, inclination to uh, this uh, practice of samsa. Okay, so he was inclined to have concentration practice. When you have an uh, inclination for concentration practice, it is easier for you to attain. Uh, psychic ability. That is the reason psychic ability is not uh, uh, comparable to the uh, 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 awakening factor. So a person may have uh, the complete psychic ability but not be awakened. And a person can be completely awakened and may be aram, but I have no psychic ability. So that is a possibility. So that is the reason he, uh, uh, he had developed the psychic ability, but when he uh, kind of uh, caused the schism in the uh, Sangha, that time his psychic ability also went away. So they are not permanent. So Samyutta Nika, I have told you this uh, Sutta, uh, uh, which uh, is kind of a uh, small part, I will tell you. I was talking about the gratification, the danger, and the escape. So this is the uh, Sutta from. Because uh, students, before my enlightenment, while I was still a bodhisattva, not yet perfectly enlightened, it occurred to me, what is the gratification, what is the danger, what is the escape in case of the earth element? It is the same for earth uh, element, uh, fi uh, uh, fire element, water element, air element, all this thing is the same. What is the gratification, what is the danger, what is the escape in case of the water element, heat element, air element, then uh, students, it occurred to me, the pleasure and joy that arise in dependence of earth element, the pleasure and joy which arise in dependence of earth element, this is the gratification in the earth element, you can also say, uh, 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 change this to earth element to your ice cream or cheesecake or something which you want to put over here. That earth element is impermanent, suffering and subject to change. That is the danger in the earth element. The removal and abandonment of desire lust for the earth element. This is the escape from the earth element. So this is how uh, this uh, thing uh, about the danger, the, uh, the gratification, the danger and the escape is there. So the gratification, danger, escape has been uh, taught in another way also. So what is the gratification is that whatever you uh, in the worldly life you get. What is the danger in the worldly life is the work you do. You will work with the uh, office and uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, appraisers you have to go through. There are a lot of uh, 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 kind of uh, promotions and then uh, you work for a promotion and you don't get a promotion. That is the danger. A, a works with the works for a, a, a kind of a house to be made 
and he makes the house, but he does not get the uh, payment for the house. Or there is a rain or a flood and the house uh, kind of washes away and he loses all his money. A businessman invests uh, something and then he uh, that, uh, loses. So those are the dangers in the uh, life also. So the, uh, this has been explained in different ways in different sutras. So the, the, the gratification and the danger and the escape is uh, uh, said by the Buddha that somebody who understands these three concepts, then he can beca uh, become an Arahant. So Arahant uh, is the, that is what you don't know, that is ignorance part. The first, uh, this is not that, that the twelve link uh, has the ignorance as a starting. So that is the ignorance you have, you don't know how it is working. And we have to strive to know how it is, it works. Is there any questions? There are no questions, written questions today, no? Huh? Oh, there is. Oh, there is. Where did the first Buddha come from? So, uh, the Buddha says that, that there were uncountable the, uh, number of Buddhas before him. So, we, he cannot, uh, uh, he uh, himself sat and uh, tried to uh, recollect his previous lives and become so tired that he said it is kind of a uh, uh, job that is uh, maybe not uh, worth my time. So uh, to find out what was the first Buddha is not possible. To find out how it started all is also not possible. He also went into the future and, uh, and then also become weary and he said there is no discernible future, end of future, means there is no discernible end and there is no discernible beginning. So it does not say there is no uh, beginning and end, but it says there is no discernible. So we cannot find out. That is one example I gave. There are four bhikkhus who sit for 100, uh, they recollect 100,000 lives in one day. And they sit for 100 years, but their task does not get over. So that is the amount of past. So what do you, huh? See, infinity is a bigger number than what we are talking about. So, infinity is a very big number. So, he says that uh, near infinity, we can say. It is a cycle. It is a cycle, but it is an ongoing cycle. So, it is not a cycle like in that uh, it goes like this, but it is an ongoing cycle. It goes on and on and on. So, there is a past, there is a present and there is a future. So, wherever we are, where are we? We are always in the present. So that is what we have to understand. So uh, uh, there is sister Kema who kind of uh, uh, gives uh, our Zoom talks and everything. So she always uh, gives an example of a car. So there is a car which comes from here, it is over here and it goes in the uh, future. So when you are in the past, you keep on accumulating uh, whatever is there and you carry the burden in the car. And the car is not functioning now well because in the present you have all this burden of the past. You are good. So when we teach you a forgiveness meditation or this uh, meditation of six hours, we are teaching you of uh, throwing all this past garbage and then you move ahead because the car is now lighter Then you will have and you always be in the present because you cannot be in the future and you cannot be in the past. You can always be in the present. So that is the uh, kind of uh, teaching. What do you think about connection of our existence with life on other planets in other galaxies? So uh, there is an indication that uh, the, the, there are many world systems. One of the indication is that uh, uh, Aniruddha says that uh, to I think uh, uh, Sariputta uh, uh, that uh, he can see ten thousand world systems, and then there is a, uh, many mentions of ten thousand world systems. So they, then uh, there is a kind of indication that there are many world systems where many of us kind of live. So there can be many. Who were uh, the Dakins? Okay, I, who would you put on me? You have, you have had an experience with them. Dakins, I don't know uh, specifically, but there are many kind of beings. Buddha kind of mentions uh, many kind of beings and then uh, there are many kind of beings which are there earthbound. So uh, over here also there may be many beings who are there. Because wherever the Buddha image is there or there is a uh, nice place like this uh, monastery, they will come and stay. 
So the Buddha said that uh, if we have to compare the life of uh, somebody who is in heavenly realm, which is this realm, uh, is earthbound devas. They are called earthbound devas. Now in earthbound devas, there are many different kinds of devas. There are yakkas, there are nagas, there are many different kinds of devas. So uh, we have to compare the life of a uh, human being to a deva, it is very difficult to do that. So one way of uh, explaining is that if you are a world conqueror, you are a world conquering king. You have uh, seven palaces and seven this thing and you have uh, so much uh, of everything. And then uh, that life as a human being, if you compare it as a stone, of a tall stone he takes out from the ground, if you compare it to a stone, the life of an earthbound deva is uh, as pleasurable as a uh, Mount Everest. So just uh, being an earthbound deva is not a small thing. To be a yaka or a, or a, the, compared to a human uh, who is an earth conquering monarch, it is uh, so big uh, difference. So uh, there are many beings and those beings in interact uh, and there are many uh, kind of uh, mentions of those in suttas where uh, they have uh, come to Buddha for advice or there, there was some story uh, in commentaries where uh, they interacted. So there, there can be a lot of things. But I have never personally had any experiences. Uh, but I think my uh, uh, teacher had some experiences of uh, this thing. They were uh, when uh, when he was taking um, uh, uh, when he was giving a, a talk when uh, they took photograph there were orbs uh, in the photos uh, so they were like uh, round orbs uh, and they, they say that uh, certain times they ca come and sit in those orbs and certain times uh, he can sense devas are there so one of the talks he said that I had to ask them to kind of uh, go back because they were coming very close to listen to him. So some uh, may have that psychic uh, this thing, but more or less uh, uh, those don't matter. The what matters is the, your wisdom, what you know, how your mind is working. So that is the main thing. What being in love or being in a romantic relationship would look like for a person practicing Buddhism? So that is a very difficult question because <coughs> it is an individual uh, expression. So, uh, uh, the Buddha's uh, basic uh, tenet is that you have to follow the five precepts. So, if the both are following five precepts, first thing they will not kill each other. <laughs> Second thing they will not steal from each other. Then they will not be unfaithful to each other. They will not uh, argue, talk uh, uh, worthless things or uh, uh, make fights. And they will not be uh, intoxicated. So those are the kind of five uh, precepts. That is the base of uh, any kind of good person. Five precepts. So that also gives you a lot of freedom. The Buddha gives you a lot of freedom to do. And one of the uh, examples of just following precepts in a non-Buddha Buddha era. So there were 33 uh, friends in a village. They got together and said, we'll keep the precepts. At that time, they knew about the four precepts. They did not know the fifth precepts, so they kept the four precepts. And they uh, kept the four precepts so well that when they passed away, they had uh, nowhere to go because their merit uh, required a special place for them. So the heaven of the 33 was created for them because they created so much merit, the 33 uh, people. So they had their own heaven, heaven of the 33. <laughs> Over here in the India, we would call it the Indra Loka. So the, the head of that uh, uh, Indra Loka, uh, the, the Indra, uh, there are uh, in our Buddhist uh, this thing teaching, it is that they are changing. So Buddha was also once an Indra. <laughs> so in the teaching, uh, they are mentioned a lot. Uh, a lot of the stories which are there in um, like Indra and uh, this thing are mentioned in uh, Suttas also. So that, that is the power of just keeping the precepts. The fifth precept is very important for us because it kind of helps us to keep all the precepts. It does not mean that they were drinking or not, but they did not know how, uh, that uh, there was a precept for uh, drinking. That is coming when uh, the Buddha comes because he has clarity of thought and he knows that having those can uh, harm. Uh, uh, the rule in uh, uh, 
the Vinaya, Vinaya rule for not drinking for monks came up when a monk was there, who was a very powerful psychic monk, he went to a uh, place where a Naga was uh, kind of uh, troubling uh, the uh, village. You, uh, this is very similar to the story of the Krishna going to and uh, 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 the seven uh, headed uh, snake. And this was very similar to the story. So uh, he goes there, he uh, conquers the Naga and uh, the village is very happy. And village uh, people ask him, what do you like? So he likes a drink which is kind of a little intoxicating. It has uh, like wine, uh, it is not a hard uh, liquor but uh, it has a intoxicating factors. So uh, everybody makes that for him and then he goes around drinking that uh, each house. At the end of the day uh, when he comes he is fully uh, uh, inaugurated, you know. He is uh, fully uh, into this uh, drink and when he comes to the Buddha he does not know where the Buddha is and he uh, uh, bows down in the opposite direction. The Buddha says that this person was uh, yesterday fighting a Naga and now he cannot find the direction where to go. <laughs> so he, he puts on down the rule. So Buddha always puts down the rule when it is necessary to put down the rule. He could have, uh, he gave the five percent to lay people but uh, put down the rule for drinking when he had a solid example to show. So he said uh, this is the way uh, you should avoid it. So, uh, the five precepts, the fifth also is important. So, it does not mean, see, that is the reason I told you that uh, if you are taking the precept, then no amount is moderate. You know? uh, I told you about the uh, actually scientific study that they said they took a one beer, one glass of beer, and asked them to do testing and the driving uh, this thing. And they uh, kind of uh, failed those uh, tests. So just one beer can uh, kind of uh, make your mind uh, wobbly. And you don't know, you, there is no legal, it is well below the legal limit, one beer. So you have to be careful with that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, but uh, say if you uh, anytime break a precept, then you can keep, uh, you, you can you can retake the precept. But you should not deliberately take the precept saying that, okay, I will retake the precept. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, I will tell you about one thing about alcohol. So, uh, alcohol in medicine is not uh, considered bad. Say if you take a cough medicine, it has alcohol, you can take that. Uh, and if you have uh, a food which is made with alcohol, which does not make you intoxicated. Like uh, if you make a rum cake, you put rum uh, and it is baked and that rum uh, kind of evaporates and there is a flavor for that rum. But uh, if you uh, take uh, rum chocolates, they, they have this uh, chocolates, if you take uh, uh, too many, then you get in, uh, in, intoxicated. Then rum chocolates are not allowed, but rum cake is allowed. Or if you, for cooking you use wine, because wine gets evaporated and you cannot get uh, in, uh, intoxicated with that food. So, uh, we have a kind of a balance which is uh, given in this. Yes. From the understanding of Buddhism, which is very related, I look at three kinds. Sayana, uh, if that is possible, Nayana, I think, Mahayana, and Vajrayana. Huh. So, what is the difference between these three and this way that this teaching falls? Yeah, I am not an expert, I am not a scholar, but uh, the thing is that uh, Theravada follows uh, Buddha's teaching as closely as possible, but it still has uh, the uh, uh, teaching of the, uh, what you call, uh, is uh, Abhi, Abhi, uh, Abhidhamma. So Abhidhamma is something which is kind of controversial for some, because Abhidhamma was something which uh, came up in the third, third, uh, uh, fourth, uh, fourth or third of fourth concept it came. So, uh, so that is the reason uh, some uh, in Theravada also are kind of this thing. There are many sects which happened immediately after the Buddha uh, passed away. In the first hundred years only, there were many kind of uh, divisions. So, divisions are uh, basically uh, because uh, what are they? What is it? Because of what is? What is it? What is what is? I don't uh, know that, but uh, it is basically because uh, each monastery can have their own uh, rules, uh, that is monastery rules. Because of that monastery rules, that basically uh, what happens is there is a uh, shift which happens. 
like the uh, uh, one sutta is there where uh, the, there are uh, the vinaya monks and the meditation monks are fighting because the rule uh, is kind of a little bit uh, nuanced about the rule. So while, uh, uh, in the toilet, if you go, there is a bowl of water. That bowl of water has to be empty. There is a pitcher of water and there is a bowl of water. If you keep the bowl of water, uh, 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 there can be a possibility that uh, uh, a uh, mosquito can come, lay eggs and that can uh, have lava in it. You can uh, uh, then uh, throw this water and kill the lava. So uh, that is a rule that you should not uh, keep the water. If you keep the water, that is an offence. There are offence class, there are classes of offence. And we discuss about the par par parajika, that is if you do that, the moment you do that, you are no longer a monk and you are reborn in a hell realm in the next life. There is no uh, recourse to that. But uh, this is a class of uh, offence where you can just confess to the monk that I did this uh, wrong and uh, uh, I can I confess for that. So uh, there is a monk who goes and the, uh, there is a second monk, Vinaya monk who goes and sees that the, uh, there is a teacher with water left. So he, he uh, comes out and says, you have, my friend have uh, put the water and there is a, this is an offence. Uh, so uh, then uh, he says that, okay, I, I will confess for, uh, to that. He says that is not required because it's your first offence, you did not know about it. So then uh, he goes and uh, there was there is an argument that you should uh, have, uh, uh, to be cautious, should have confessed to that offence. Then they, uh, uh, the other uh, group uh, kind of counter arguments that you cannot confess to a uh, rule you are not broken. So that is also an offence. So then uh, there is a kind of discussion about how to resolve this because there are certain rules in Vinaya, not all rules, but there are certain rules where the, uh, if you don't know uh, the rule, uh, then it is not breaking the rule. But uh, there are certain rules where even if you did not know of breaking, that is cut. So those is a kind of a very uh, technical thing. So this kind of small uh, differences can kind of uh, take people apart. And then uh, there are monastery rules which are there and the, those things uh, kind of fundamentally, then you uh, have that fundamentally uh, certain things which uh, they say that uh, uh, silver and gold have been uh, uh, banned. But uh, if you are using as a, a credit card, then it is not gold, it is not silver, and it is not a, a money also. Okay, so uh, there is a credit, and somebody else pays for that uh, thing. So the, those are kind of a, a, a rules and how it is considered. That is the main reason. And there are many uh, the, uh, greater reasons, like uh, if somebody uh, is uh, considering himself so mahan, then he says, "I am mahan." Then he consider others he. <laughs> So that is also a thing that uh, somebody considers himself, I am Maham, so I am Mahayana, and then this this is the way I, I work. So that name and everything is a uh, incidental thing. Vajrayana is there uh, or something like that. So that is incidental. What is uh, fundamental is that uh, how you interpret the rule. That is the reason first thing I told uh, uh, when I started is that when you are looking at something, you look at from a perspective. So how you are looking at that perspective makes kind of a difference and by this perspective there, there is a breakup and there is an accumulation of certain things which happen like uh, uh, rituals also have accumulated over time into different things. Like there is a ritual where uh, in uh, Sri Lanka where uh, when uh, saying Yatha, Varibara, Pura, Purante, Sagrana that they put a, a kind of a small uh, cup and, and they pour water till it Overflows. The wording of the sutta is that as uh, the uh, rivers overflow into the oceans, in the same way what uh, merit I have done should overflow to my relatives. So that are the words. So to symbolize that is made into a uh, ritual. And now that can add and add and then the rituals can be uh, uh, more elaborated. Then uh, there is a kind of a uh, ritual that says that everybody should touch them. Okay. 
So now one, uh, one of those uh, is there, everybody uh, touches it. And in uh, Malaysia what they do is, if uh, they are not in contact, they touch the person who touches it. So there is an accumulation of <laughs> ritual. <laughs> so in that way it kind of adds up and uh, kind of distorts into whatever is there. So there is a, uh, whatever is there, uh, it comes back to what is teach, uh, what is the teaching and how you go back to the origin, which is the sutra. historical perspective okay but what I'm saying is that from the fundamental perspective it is how you have looked at the teachings and uh, get, get taken in perspective in it like you can uh, you one uh, can see this teaching and say that nothing can be mixed with this okay like my teacher uh, is more purist says that nothing can be uh, mixed with the suttas if the sutta is saying that is uh, uh, predominant somebody can say okay we can do a practical thing and then distortion and that is the reason that we say uh, about uh, uh, your uh, uh, whenever there is a distraction which comes when you don't uh, kind of six are that that can change into uh, over here also the wordings have been given in a different way that what happens is it can change into another other this thing it can grow that is uh, if you have a, a thought about the uh, say office then there are many thoughts of office will come then office is related to your uh, income. Then the thoughts about oh, uh, how will my uh, salary be there, and then how will I spend it, and then how how will I uh, what happened to my investments? What is happening in the stock market? So all these distortions comes up because one has started. Okay, so one thing starts and it adds up and adds up and adds up and goes up. So how you are interpreting what is there over here? It starts with that. So they all have uh, the suttas and some way they use the suttas then they have some uh, other suttas which are uh, added to it like uh, the lotus or the uh, whatever other uh, suttas are added. So those things are, uh, but they fundamentally start from looking at the teaching and uh, taking an uh, interpretation from that. It starts with that interpretation and it, it goes on and on uh, in layers and layers. So it happens over time. So uh, what uh, uh, my teacher says is that whatever uh, whatever you are uh, doing as of now, we, we don't kind of uh, kind of say that it is wrong. But what uh, 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 my teacher says is what is effective. Currently, if your uh, uh, aim is to uh, uh, awaken, okay, to get rid of your dukkha, what is effective? If the, you're going back to the source. Like uh, one example given by uh, Sister Kima is that uh, if you have a car, okay, and you go to the mechanic and he cannot find the problem, what, what you will do? You will take out the manual which the company has given and then you look at what is happening in the car with compared with the manual. So what is the manual given by the Buddha is the suttas. So when uh, your effectiveness in your practice is not uh, kind of uh, there, then you go back and check with the suttas because that is the manual given by the Buddha who is the origin of the teaching. So as a uh, uh, car it does not work, uh, you go to the manual to see what has happened. If it still does not work, you send it to the manufacturer. You go to the manufacturer and say, look at this car and uh, fix it to me. 
so the, uh, 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 Bande Bimbal Ram is saying that you just look at it as a practical uh, aspect. What is effective? If it, it is effective and it gives you benefits, then use it. If it does not give you benefits, then you discard it. So our aim is just to be effective in what we are achieving, not to kind of have that uh, perspective of what are the sects or uh, whatever, whatever is there. We are uh, giving this teaching to all kinds of religion and all kinds of people, you know. So uh, people who have uh, followed this have uh, got uh, benefits. There are many people who still uh, go to temples, there are many people who still chant, uh, there are many people who are uh, uh, in their atheists, they are still atheists. So they do what uh, they are doing in the daily life. But if this is effective to change your behavior, the main uh, criteria for doing meditation is, does it change your behavior in your daily life? Yes, yes, that's what I am answering that, but in yeah. बहुत सारे बुद्ध हैं 
जैसे तीर्थंकर का कुछ लिमिटेड है मतलब उनका भी कुछ ऐसा था कि ग्यारह तीर्थंकर थे और यहाँ पे कुछ ग्यारह तीर्थंकर थे मिल के बाईस हो गए ऐसा कुछ भी लोगों का हुआ है तो इस तरह से हम नहीं मानते हम मानते हैं कि ये सारी चीज़ें जानना पॉसिबल नहीं है तो और लोग और इम्पोर्टेंट भी नहीं है <laughs> कितने बुद्ध थे उसका जान के क्या करेंगे हमारा आज का यही है ना कि हम आज किस तरह से हम अपना समय बिता रहे हैं हमारा मन किस तरह से हमें यात्राएं दे रहा है तो वो सारा से वो उसका कोई संबंध नहीं है तो हम सिर्फ हमारे कार्य से कार्य रख रहे हैं और कोई सवाल है यस Yeah, that painful feeling is a painful feeling, which is a kind of a valid feeling you can uh, keep, because that is a longing for something which is wholesome. So, because that uh, ultimately will give you uh, the abandonment of all uh, kind of uh, pain. That pain is uh, a, a pain which can be endured, because that uh, leads you to uh, the painless state. Now, mm -hmm. Nipa. But isn't that you know pain? Their aversion is not there because it's a wholesome this thing. That's the reason they say the aversion is not there in that painful state. When you are uh, having a longing for nibbana, then that longing does not have aversion in it. Do you have aversion uh, right now situation? No, that is a longing. There is a pain also for the longing, but that longing is a wholesome longing, and that pain does not have aversion underlying it. That is what uh, it said in the sutta. So when the pain does not underline, the, like the pleasure in jhana does not underline the dust. Mm -hmm. So that is why. Yes, right. Attachment is there. Attachment. Yeah. Attachment is uh, not there. Uh, there is a uh, want to go. Uh, as I told you uh, previously, that if there is an address, okay, piece of address, that is needed for you to go where you are going. So that amount of attachment you have to have to progress. If you don't know where you are going, then uh, what, where, what direction you go? So this uh, attachment of a piece of address is the attachment you need. When you reach the destination, do you need the address then? Then you discard it. But there must be some aversion to you know current situation. That's why they are longing for something else. That is what the Buddha says that when there is an aversion to the current situation, there are two kinds of reactions you have. One reaction is to distract yourself. To run away. Today also one uh, student ran away because there was one thought he had that he is trying too hard. It is it will not happen, so he ran away. The, the, that one thought uh, created that uh, aversion to him, and then he took it so seriously that he just left. Yes, till yesterday he was doing very good. Just one thought, and he ran away. That that is uh, he he is now seeking distraction somewhere. Now the other is asking the question. What uh, created this, and how can I get? Just tell me one word. Uh, Buddha says that uh, that person says, just tell me one word. Uh, please tell me two or three words to for me to understand what is happening, and how can I escape that? That is what happened to Sariputta. He asked uh, when he saw uh, uh, a monk. I think it was uh, Pondanya, and he saw the monk and said that just tell me something. <laughs> So he said that for everything which has a origin, everything which has an origin, that has uh, an end. The Buddha has taught that. So just uh, missing the heart, uh, half the thing for everything which has an origin. That he understood that if everything has an uh, origin, then it has an end. So when he understood that, he understood the basic principle, and he was a sotapan. So uh, that that longing is there because there is a. Dukha. Uh, yes. Uh, in one of the teaching in Dikha uh, Nikaya, Buddha is talking about uh, previous Buddhas. One of the Buddhas, uh, he talks about Buddha Vipassi. So he says that all Buddhas who come, okay. Will teach the same teaching. 
because that the, there is no difference because that there is a kind of a uh, another planet which is there okay let us uh, examine and there are scientists in that planet so some scientists will discover the gravity how will they discover gravity because they will see a mango fall maybe it will not be an apple but they will see a mango fall and uh, say why did the mango fall it did not go up and they will discover because there is gravity as a fundamental uh, uh, part of this universe then this gravity will be discovered and that gravity is the equation will match the gravity of the newtons because he is describing the same thing so every buddha who will come will give the same teaching so he gives teachings uh, which the uh, buddha vipassi has given uh, and i think one other uh, uh, buddha uh, he mentions uh, in the nikaya so the nikaya uh, he clearly mentions that other buddhas whoever buddha comes they will give the same teaching why they will give the same teaching but the same samsara is there the same rules are there so this uh, dependent origination the 12 links are there even if there are buddha or there are no buddha the 12 links of dependent origination work as they work so for example buddha parmasambhava is buddha who came after vatama buddha which was forecasted that it will come and parmasambhava has different teachings then that is a kind of that is what i am saying that that is a, a kind of a thing which comes later on when the, the, uh, currently if there is a buddha era then there cannot be any other buddha which is there there can be a buddha which was before that uh, but there cannot be buddha uh, uh, in the buddha era there cannot be two simultaneous buddhas so how the, you kind of perspe- uh, uh, take the perspective is uh, different but uh, as per the teaching as per the, uh, whatever is there in the sutras there can be one buddha at one uh, time and when the buddha era ends then the next buddha is also predicted that buddha is the amitabha buddha and that buddha when he will come it will be 100000 years one uh, human life will be 100000 years he will teach each a person individually when he is talking to 100000 people there will be 100000 ways he will talk to each per- per- person psychically so they can understand <laughs> so that that is also kind of a lot of craving for people to go and be reborn in the uh, next uh, buddha but that is very difficult that is uh, if you can do that then you can att- attend the nibbana in this life exactly. if you have that kind of a mental power then you can attend nibbana in this life itself and he said that there will be Vinaya. Vinaya is not there when the uh, Buddha uh, is born in an era which is kind of I think 80,000 years or above. So he does not need to because in this uh, amount of time he can uh, uh, teach uh, whoever can be awakened will be awakened. As soon as the Buddha uh, passes away it declines and uh, fades away the teaching. So this t- teaching also will decline and fade away. Uh, so everything is impermanent. So So you said that uh, Buddha Mitabha is the future Buddha. The future Buddha is uh, a current uh, Bodhisattva or and the future Buddha. Because that is as per the uh, teachings of the Buddha or uh, the sutras. Is Maitreya. Huh? Maitreya. Sorry. Sorry, Maitreya. Uh, uh, sorry, Maitreya. I, 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 I missed book. Maitreya Buddha. That is also called the Amitabha Buddha, I think. Uh, that is different. That is different. Uh, I thought I uh, confused that. Previous. Huh? Previous. Previous Buddha. Maitreya. Maitreya Buddha. I, 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 if I have still spoken, then I correct. Before also, I think I... I Maitreya Buddha. Maitreya Buddha is mentioned uh, by name uh, over here in Shri Sutta. So, that is as per the Sutta. So, we don't kind of... Uh, if somebody has another belief, then I don't want to kind of... Uh, uh, kind of conflict with anybody. But that is... Uh, third or fourth concept i think so i remember as third concept yes. uh, so are they still having this concept this they recently had that concept recently means uh, when uh, ambedkar ji was uh, there baba saheb ambedkar 1956 they had a conference it's concept 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 that was the sixth in memory so and when you go fifth concept is fifth fifth or sixth fifth fifth was in memory There is a kind of a seventh council uh, work on seventh council going on. Uh, 
because my uh, uh, teacher was in a uh, world uh, Buddhist conference, but there are I think uh, hundred uh, or thousand one world Buddhist councils. So I don't know uh, which, uh, but uh, that uh, was uh, supported by some uh, Shinto uh, Buddhist uh, sect, and they were kind of planning to have the next uh, Buddhist council. But you, the religion. See, I, I, if I remember correctly, in, in Thailand, Burma and Sri, uh, Sri Lanka is Theravada. In uh, uh, Japan, I think the major is Zen and then the, uh, they have a minor uh, that is Shinto is, uh, but uh, Shinto is I think uh, of the kings. So they are very powerful in that chair. I think Suzuki and all those uh, uh, big names are, uh, Shin, uh, they follow Shinto. China also different, no? China, I don't think they have Buddhism as such. Yeah, they follow uh, uh, some other thing. Uh, I think the most of the China is uh, Christian. Confucius. Confucius and all these things. Communist. Huh? They are communist, but uh, there are many religions they are following. Uh, yes. No, no, they all have different practices, but I think the goal is same. Everybody's goal is same. The goal is same. That is what they are doing. They have different things they do. Everyone does. So what we are saying that uh, uh, measure it by the effectiveness, not by what is uh, the name and what is the lineage and what is the past or uh, something like that. Because this teaching is uh, timeless, akalipa. So ehi pasiko is come and see. Come and see if it is effective, it is for you. If it is not effective, then you can leave it. There are hundred thousand uh, different uh, paths you can take. So you just measure this by its own. Uh, effectiveness and if it is effective for you it is for you if it is not then you can uh, there are many other ways so but we don't uh, believe in uh, the adage that all ways lead to one thing there are one uh, ways which will lead to you having uh, this thing and then there are ways which can mislead you so you have to be careful also but uh, but how you evaluate is one uh, uh, monk uh, told uh, one thing about uh, this was very uh, uh, good advice. He said, whatever you follow, follow it for six months totally and see how effective it was in your life. If at the end of six months it was not effective, then you can go to another. But don't mix and match and don't simultaneously do three different things. Or uh, discard uh, uh, or keep aside and try one thing for six months. Then you see if it is effective, then you know. It is like an experiment. Buddha also says there are two ways to uh, uh, access this uh, teaching. One is through uh, faith and one is through experimentation. You come as an experimentation, you listen, then you follow, you have faith, you uh, follow more and then you progress. You come as a faith, that is the reason you listen, then you uh, practice, then you uh, listen more and you follow and you progress. So both ways you can uh, come as, it, uh, as an experimenter or as a, as a faith person. So both will lead you to uh, listening, then practice, and then faith and growth. So, so experimental path means a lot of um, tracks probably because you go up and down if you are on experiment. But one of the suttas, I, I don't know to read now, but uh, that uh, sutta uh, talks about the path that Buddha takes. The Buddha uh, says that uh, uh, I want to, uh, uh, when he was not the Buddha, but uh, technically Bodhisattva takes. Uh, Bodhisattva uh, uh, goes to Adhara Karama, then he goes to Udhagarama Buddha, he attains uh, nothingness in uh, neither perception nor perception. Then he says that this is also not leading me to uh, the Nirvana, I want to uh, do other things. Then he goes for uh, eating practices. He eats this thing, he eats that thing, he eats that thing. Then he goes to another practice uh, of uh, equanimity. He's so equanimous that even if somebody spits on his face, he uh, does not react. So equanimity uh, by itself does not lead you to Nibbana. Then he goes to uh, not eating. He stops eating, 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 and then he uh, almost dies. And he, he says, I will stop breathing, and he cuts his tongue and uh, he almost dies. He says that whatever I have done, 
other human being can be equal it, but they are cannot exceed it by, uh, without dying. Whatever I have done, a, a human being can come to the same level, but if he goes, try to go more, he will die. So without dying, uh, somebody can kind of only uh, do uh, as much as I have done. And he finds that nothing of that works. And then he goes to this, uh, remembers his childhood, his uh, meditation experience, and then he comes back to this tranquil wisdom, what we call it, tranquil wisdom, uh, jhanas, practice. And then he progresses. So that is how experimentation works. You have to give, uh, do uh, that to the level that no other human being can exceed you in that. So if you take up this practice, six months is a reasonable time for you to try. If it works, okay. If it does not, work, it's up to you. <laughs> You can strive for those things if you want to, but by in itself, it can become a kind of a consumer. So you don't have to become a consumer of those states. When you want uh, peace, you want this thing, and you want to consume those states, they have this danger. That is what I, I read now. That is a gratification you uh, uh, get from those states. The danger is all those states are impermanent. But what we are uh, aiming for Nibbana, is uh, a permanent state. It is not an impermanent state. When you att attain Nibbana, there is no uh, uh, change of state as such. So that is the reason it is a different category. So this longing for Nibbana is okay, but it is uh, uh, final stage. It is a final stage. Okay, <laughs> okay anything else? That is what uh, we uh, say that if you have to pray for something, there is only one thing you can pray for, that is Nibbana. <laughs> so that craving is not bad? That is not bad because ultimately the lust is not bad in that and the aversion is not bad. Because when you achieve that, you uh, leave everything at that point of time. There is a time when you come that you don't need the address, you are at the door. At the door you don't need. But you have to go out the door, you have to leave this address. And then you can walk off the door. That is where the situation experience happens. That time you leave everything. Leave, leave, leave. Let go. So it starts with let go and it keeps on going to let go. <laughs> so, So that, those are, I think, uh, academic questions, so I'll just uh, uh, stop it like that, because these are kind of uh, intellectual questions. They are practically what you can do is more important, so we'll let that go. <laughs> okay, anything else? Koi or sawal hai na? Hindi mein bhi kuch sakta hai. Guruji, why That is very simple. In, in the suttas or the Vinaya, they have been given a, a series of colors. Uh, and those colors were dependent on the uh, mud which was there in the area, or the tree bark which was there in the area, or the flower which was there in the area. And they were not clashing with other sects. So some uh, color like black are kind of forbidden. Some uh, colors like uh, purple are there, but uh, they are uh, uh, not used uh, commonly. Uh, in, uh, I think purple is used in Burma uh, for some things. Uh, my uh, uh, teacher gave purple to uh, the nun uh, he ordained. So there are certain colors they are not used uh, this thing. Their brown robes are there which is from the jackfruit tree bark. Uh, you uh, boil them and uh, they, they, they become bark. This I think comes from uh, the, I think from the flowers, uh, the, uh, uh, I think saffron flowers or something like that. And then there is a, a red color comes from also uh, like golden color like this comes from the mud. There Do was a mud. Any huh? Does it have any significance? No significance. This is just a practicality. 
Uh, one significance is that that uh, uh, a white uh, uh, cloth was uh, very uh, expensive and uh, uh, desirable. Thing. So uh, this is kind of making it worthless. One other thing making it worthless is if you see, you notice there are uh, all this stitching over here. This stitching is done so uh, that uh, it is the coat, uh, the, uh, the one piece of uh, cloth can be used for different things. If you cut it up and sew it, then it, it becomes worthless. So the only significance is commercially this thing is worthless. That is the only significance to make it worthless for it to be stolen. Somebody st steals this, it, uh, he cannot do much with it. So that is the only reason. Because that, that was a real problem at the time of Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the significance of the color. There is no significance. It's a practical thing. Cutting uh, is also a practical thing. So Buddha has uh, many uh, rules which are there, but those are uh, practically useful. Okay. Can this practice be done with Yogasana practice? Yes, you can do. Uh, there is one uh, of our student, uh, my teacher student, uh, who does, uh, I think, Shakti uh, or uh, Sukha Yoga, Sukha Yoga or something like that. He uh, converted that and we had a uh, uh, few sessions also on our Zoom meeting we had. So he uh, uses the relaxed step uh, and uh, this uh, step of doing it with uh, metta, loving, kindness and he has a different kind of yoga but you can use it with that. Uh, you can use the relaxed step and how to relax in this uh, this thing and uh, you can use it. That's not in the Any other thing? Okay, we we'll share the merits now. May suffering once be suffering free, and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all be, and may all beings find thee. May all beings share this merit that they have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabit in space and earth. Devas and Nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the 